So what would women with undiagnosed AS notice, and what are the symptoms? Uh, the, the most obvious symptom is usually a reduction in the menstrual loss after a procedure which could potentially cause Ashman syndrome. Uh, some women stop their periods completely uh, and other women will experience some pain, particularly if there's a complete obstruction to the outflow of the, uh, of the uterus, because in those circumstances, the endometrium which isn't damaged will continue menstruating and if it's contained within some adhesions then what it does is um, it expands and causes discomfort, cramping and um, pressure and bloating symptoms. And also I guess if a woman is trying to conceive for a year or numerous amount of years after having one of these procedures and she's not conceiving, then that's quite a big giveaway as well. It, well, if she's not having periods, that's the most important thing. But if, if she's not conceiving, then it's certainly worthwhile checking uh, to see the uterus is all right. Is AS the only cause of missing periods follow DNC where hormone levels remain the same, remain normal? It depends on how the hormone levels are checked. If you just do a one-off test of, of hormones, then you can get apparently normal levels, but you may not be getting the cycling changes in hormones, which is what you need to see to develop periods. Polycystic ovaries is the, the most common condition which uh, causes delay in periods. And a woman who has conceived after treatment for polycystic ovaries may well find that she doesn't get a period back for some time, even though her hormone levels appear normal. But if we can rule out polycystic ovaries or any other hormonal cause of missed periods, mm -hmm. then Ashman syndrome is the most likely diagnosis. So what are the different methods of diagnosis? Ashman syndrome is diagnosed by either performing a, a hysterosalpingogram, probably the most useful investigation, which is where we use an x-ray contrast medium to distend the uterus, to outline the cavity of the uterus, and we'll see little filling defects inside the uterus where the uh, adhesions prevent the, the dye from running. So that's the first and probably the best method, but we wouldn't necessarily use that as a first-line investigation. Most women going through fertility treatment will have an ultrasound scan, and an ultrasound scan can sometimes make the diagnosis. Not a standard ultrasound scan, you need a very high-definition scanner, which can uh, give you a 3D image of the, particularly of the lining of the womb, and we can see discontinuities in areas of scarring and, and increased echoes at sites of, of scar tissue. What are the pros and cons of each form of diagnosis? Because I know you say I had a normal ultrasound done at a, at a hospital where they told me everything was fine, they couldn't see anything, and as soon as I came to you and had the 3G one, you could see that I had severe AS. I think that the, the advantage of the hysterosalpingogram and the ultrasound scan is that they give us an indication and, a, and raise our awareness and, and uh, raise the possibility of there being Ashman syndrome. We need to confirm that by doing a hysteroscopy. A hysteroscopy is where we put a little telescope inside the uterus so we can actually see where the adhesions are, providing we can get there. The problem is that sometimes it's very difficult to find our way through a very scarred cervical canal, uh, and that's why the, the that's why the hysteroscopy really ought to be done by, by Ashman specialists. And you have the opportunity to treat the condition at the same time that you diagnose it. Okay.